So if I want to activate the extensors in the back of my head, if I want to activate the extensors in my back, anything down here, I look up. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Perry from Stop Chasing Pain. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video that we've got coming at you. This one is about a 15 minute uh, excerpt from one of my popular courses called iMojo. That's where we spend eight hours talking about how the eyes can influence pain and movement. Through this 15 minute clip, you'll see me talk about how when you move the eyes, the muscles in your body anticipate movement. So eye movement can help you feel better with muscles that you may have that are tired or fatigued or tight or tense, painful, stuff like that. So you'll start to do some eye exercises that you can see a lot of on our YouTube channel. We're also going to talk about the, the role that eye movement plays in pain. You'll also see we cover a little bit about how the eyes reveal a ton about the internal state of the body. Whenever I look around the eyes, I look for puffiness, swelling, redness, inflammation. Those are always tied depending on what part of the eye you're looking at as spleen, possible spleen issues, gallbladder, liver, adrenals, kidney. Those are all around the eyes. Very, very cool stuff. And then we'll also talk about how you can train the eyes a little bit. What I encourage you to do is just while you're on my YouTube channel, go into the search box at the top and just type in eyes. And a lot of stuff will show up. Just start doing some of those. When you start working with the eyes on purpose, intentionally, more than just using them throughout the day, I want you to notice, do you feel better in your body with something? Maybe it's less pain. Maybe I move better. I have less tightness. I have less fatigue. I just feel like my athletic performance even got a little bit better. The big takeaway from this little excerpt is how powerful the eyes are in relationship to the function of your whole body. And we hope to see you at our next Eye Mojo course coming up sometime in 2025. If you want to see even more, you can join our Mojo Pro membership site on StopChasingPain.com and see a couple of thousand videos to help you feel better. Okay, with that, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's go. So let's talk about this a little bit, all right? So looking up facilitates extension. So if I look up, Okay. Everything in the back of my body is going to start to prime, thinking that I'm going to what? Lean back. So if I want to activate the extensors in the back of my head, if I want to activate the extensors in my back, anything down here, I look up. Right? So it's a great way to get contraction in a certain plane of the body, a certain side of the body. Looking down feeds flexion. It feeds, I'm going to look down. I'm, if my eyes are going down, my body is probably assuming that I need to bend my head down to look better at that ball. For instance, if I'm a golfer, then it activates my abdominal chain, my psoas chain, my flexor chains down here. Everything begins to go like this. That's also why looking down at a damn phone all the time is feeding this kind of flexion posture, right? As opposed to this one. But when you rotate, that's going to feed rotation chain. So that's why the horizontal pursuits, this is where I need you to think, why the horizontal pursuits or saccades or looking up and down can influence the musculoskeletal system because maybe you have a lot of tightness and tension in one of those muscles and you're chasing the damn muscle and the muscle is not the problem, okay? Muscles uh, usually have a guarding reflex. It's called the muscle guarding reflex. And muscles never guard anything without a reason. What's the reason? Protection and compensation. So guarding is a protection response, most often because you got crappy blood flow somewhere. That's the biggest reason, right? So 
if you're chasing that muscle all the time and you're rubbing it and icing it and putting heat and stem and all that stuff on it, it's not letting go. Stop blaming the damn muscle. You have to look at the brain and the body and maybe it's something to do with how you're moving your eye. So if I know there's a muscle on a particular muscle on a front side or a back side, then I'm going to be able to play around with the eyes and see how that might make a difference. Okay, so when I look to the right, that's going to facilitate right rotation because it feels that you're going to turn and rotate to your right. Right, but it also look at gives right extension and left flexion. What does that mean? So if I'm looking to my right this way, this is right extension, left flexion. You understand that? Okay, like this. So this is the kind of pattern that I've got. Because if I if I look this way, it's going this way. I mean, that's just wrong, all right? So that's why looking sideways is so great for what? Rotational issues, oblique issues, but low back injuries. Because low back injuries often happen a lot when people are stuck in what? flexion and rotation when they rotate so many times working the eyes will carry over to help you with your what lower back pain lower back pain stabilization the most important thing is to really start to look at the eyes in relationship to uh, posture pain um stress response fight or flight response right the autonomic nervous system balance pretty much everything. Big deal today because of the uh, time that people spend scrolling on phones and TikTok and, you know, don't even get me started on how blue light is impacting the entire body. <clears throat> but if you're doing this for yourself, doing this for a loved one, or you're in a clinical setting where you're actually taking care of other people, first thing you want to start to do is visual inspection of the eyes. Remember to look for the puffiness and the darkness underneath the eyes, suspect lymphatic, blood flow stagnation. <clears throat> Kidney, gallbladder are really big in my world, and then you should, i.e., look towards doing the big six reset or coming to one of our blood flow mojo courses or lymph flow mojo courses. We teach you how to change blood flow and lymph flow throughout the entire body. And you can suspect adrenal fatigue, which most humans probably have, because of why? They're stuck in sympathetic dominance, hypervigilance, hyperarousal, fight or flight, all right? <clears throat> First thing you're going to do is suspect that they have sympathetic dominance. Check the pupil constriction on everyone and for yourself. The goal is to get the pupil to constrict and hold. By shining the light 45 degrees into the eye, you can begin to train that like uh, pupil constriction push-ups. You also can help that by doing the eye exercises that you're going to learn, or i.e. doing these assessments in and of themselves. We'll use the eye muscles in particular for the oculomotor nerve, which is cranial nerve number three, which is part of the parasympathetic nervous system, correct? But as I've said before, in all honesty, if you work any of the cranial nerves on your brain stem or forebrain, I think you are going to influence your autonomic nervous system because they all interconnect with each other. <clears throat> then you do convergence and you look and see well, how well somebody can track in a finger or a pen or something towards here. That will actually probably be one of the very first exercises that you're going to have people focus on. And it can take quite a long time up to a month sometimes or more for people to get good at that, particularly if they see two fingers really, really quickly, or if they have one that diverges off, or they have neuroinflammation, brain fog, or past head trauma. We'll go over some of those. Um, so that's always a, a crowd favorite is our pencil push-ups. Then you get into the smooth pursuit, so following that big giant H, that in and of itself is a perfect parasympathetic nervous system reset. I do highly encourage you to do that either in a lying down or a seated position for most people, because it will usually be easier, but you can assess it in any position that you want. 
I often will do it standing up because many people have to use so much of the rest of their nervous system and their other systems to stay standing up that I can spot a dysfunction rather quickly when they're standing up. And then the fixations, remember to lock and hold on a point. Now, listen, I want, I want to cover this for a second to say, remember I told you before of how that's very critical to look at what I term trauma lock, where you fixated on something where there was a prior trauma event in your life, and it doesn't have to be a quote unquote big trauma because the size of a trauma is relative. It's contextual. It can be a small thing. But for a person, it was a big thing on something that they're seeing in a particular direction that they're looking. Now, why do the fixations hold such power? I want you to go back to your developmental days, okay? From being a baby to, uh, to moving on the ground, to being able to crawl, to roll, sit, scoot, stand, move, walk, run. There are stages that you have to go to. So when you see a, a baby that's first out in the world, how does it orient itself to the world? It sticks everything you can think of in its mouth, particularly what? Hands and what else? Feet. So hands, feet, and mouth are huge sensory input areas for your body because they have to relate to the world around them, but they also give you information about the world around you. And then that's when all these neurons start going crazy for babies. What's another one? Eyes. They're looking at everything. They're taking everything in with what? They look at something, they turn their head towards something, or they turn it away from something because that's usually the only way that they can move anywhere or get anything is to look at it because they can't roll over yet. And they also do what? Facial recognition. They mimic and they look at the faces of the people around them, particularly their caregiver, whoever that might be, right? And then they can read the environment. They can read the nervous system state of other people through what? The eyes, the sounds, the words, the tone, the pace, that's why words and language regulate a human nervous system, right? But babies also, when they're rolling over and they're getting on their elbows and crawling, they look at things, they turn their head, they focus on things, and they fixate, eye fixations, and they move usually towards what they're looking at, right? That's the whole premise of when you see something, the body wants to go to it. Eyes go, head goes, body goes, bing, bang, boom, just like that, okay? So why am I telling you this? Because whenever you work with the eyes, when you work with gaze fixations, when you work with your hands and your feet, you can significantly impact the whole body, but in particular, your nervous system. So it can put you into a nice, calmed, relaxed state or a stress state. It's also why people enjoy face massages, why they like hand massages, why like they like foot massages, some people, okay? But they can also put people through fight or flight. But you get the idea of what I'm telling you here. Remember, 80% of the brain is devoted to visually what you see and your experience after you've seen something and how your body responded to what you've seen in the past, it will remember those reflexive patterns. You can be quote unquote, what people would call a trigger or something, all right? That's why this work is so powerful. So fixations, even though they seem simple, like doc, come on, really? You're gonna have me just sit and stare at a point for about 30 seconds? That's going to do anything? Uh, yeah, like a lot. First thing you're going to notice is it's rather difficult to do that. Uh, one, because people have this critter brain that's jumping all over the place, and they, they have to look at something moving in front of their face 5 billion miles an hour, or they go bananas. That's the TikTok syndrome. <laughs> you get somebody to focus on a single point in anything for 30 seconds, you're lucky, right? But we're also going to look at range of motion and pain and overall how the body moves and feels when you begin to do 
I work. I don't want you to overcomplicate this at all. What I want you to notice that in the beginning is when I start to do some exercises, you start with the list that I've given you because they're usually from easiest. Easiest is not the right word, but probably the less stressful to your brain and nervous system than the ones below it. So you can tiptoe in and tolerate it more. That's going to be your barometer on when you might want to stop or when you've done too much is that movement that you checked to see how it is pain or restriction wise gets better with movement and then it gets worse with movement. What I mean by that is that I can do a couple of ish, a couple of examples of the convergence. Let's say I did three convergence exercises and you're like, holy crap, doc. Like, my arm can go higher and I feel uh, le even less pain in my damn knee um, or when I move. But let's say I did a fourth set. So I did three sets of this and then I did a fourth set. And then after I did a fourth set of the convergence, you go, ow, actually that, that like feels a little bit worse or I don't move as far. What does that tell you? That means your brain is telling you, hey, you know what? I like that, but you pushed your luck here, buddy. Like, that's just a little bit too much. So let's back off and give me what is known as what? The minimal effective dose. You don't have to sledgehammer me to get me well. Because trust me, if you sledgehammer me, I'm going to take you out. Like, I'm going to make you regret that decision. Okay? So go by how you feel. This is really important. Go by how you feel. Do not go by anybody else's recommendations or templates of repetitions or sets or how often you do it. You have to figure that out for yourself. So that should be empowering for you. But the one thing I've learned as well is that sometimes that freaks people out because there's too many options and that's just as stressful as people who give you no options, right? No options compared to too many options. It's the Goldilocks. Just start, do some, see how you feel, explore and play. I will tell you that you, when you begin this work, okay? Um, see if I can find it. Yeah, uh, you're not going to go through all these things in one shot, okay? Because that's probably going to be way too much for anybody, like hashtag beast mode monster person. This may fry your brain. Just start to work your way through it. And you may notice one, you're like, Doc, that, was, that one was awesome. I think eye circles, I loved it. What do you think I'm going to tell you? Do eye circles. Right. And then you're going to say how much. And then my answer is yes. Right. Explore and play. These everybody should get at least once. Right. You need to reboot, reset your system to allow these things over here to work at their optimum. So let's review these. 